Imagine for a moment how quickly and effortlessly your task could be completed. The task which took hours are now completed in minutes or even in seconds. Today, we will explore five powerful macros that can transform the way you work in SolidWorks. Starting with our first macro, and that is Batch DWG in DXF export. Here, I have this complete control panel assembly, and this Control panel assembly contains a lot of sheet metal parts in the form of sub assembly. So, we will open a small sub assembly. And before I am showing you the macro, here is the conventional method that most of the people use to export the flag patterns as DXF and DWG. And uh, this isn't the right method that you should follow. And uh, we will see how we can reduce this task with macro. First thing, we require this macro ribbon. Here you can see. If you do not have, just right click on the command manager, go to toolbars and then select macro. So you will get this. And to create a new macro button, go to customize, then select commands. And in the macro section, you will find out create a new macro button once you drop it it will ask you for the file path and i have provided all these macro files as a zip file in the description you can just download it select this file click open and you can also give your preferred name here and click ok we are done location of exported file will be the same as where your assembly or sub assembly lies in so when i run this macro it will create a folder named as dxf and one by one it will export all the parts in the form of dxf here you can see And once the operation is complete, it will also show you the notification that operation is completed. Yes, you can see here. Click OK. To export the flat patterns as DWG, go to Edit Macro. Select the macro file. In the Visual Basics, go to top of the code line. And here you will see it's the folder name. And at the end, it's the file extension. We just need to replace it with the DWG. And here with the same DWGS. Yes. And the file name of your exported DWG and DXF file will be the same as your SOLIDWORKS file name. Once you are done, just click on the reset button. Save the macro. And close the Visual Basics. Again, run the macro. In the file explorer, you will find out the new folder name as DWGS is created and it will export all the files as DWG. So this macro has a drawback that it won't capture the crucial information and that is bending nodes, bending direction, angle and radius. We can eliminate this problem by providing production drawings for a reference. Let us see our second macro and that is Enhance Selection Tools. Basically this macro provides SOLIDWORKS more ability to select components, parts or even helpful in the assembly module. We will again create a new macro button. Just right click on the command manager, go to customize. First, I have to delete the existing one. Again, create new macro button, select the file. 
and click ok we are done once you click on the macro button in the tools you will find out component selection option will be added and in the component selection you will see is different options so if you have if you want to select volume you can select with volume if you have similar parts you can select this identical component if you have parts with same size you can select this same size option and if you have hardware components you can just select toolbox let us see with an example just randomly suppress some components go to tools and in the component selection select suppress you can see in the design tree it is highlighting the parts which are suppressed you can now just unsuppress it let us see an another example solidworks has a default option for the hidden components and that is show hidden components and in which you just have to drag on the components which you would like to unhide once you drop your selection it will unhide the parts but if you want to see that your hidden parts lies in which sub assembly or in the main assembly this macro is for you so just go to component selection select hidden the hidden parts are highlighted in the design tree and you can understand that these two components are hidden in the sub assembly and this one is hidden in the main assembly so it becomes more handy when it comes to select hidden parts you can try the rest of the options or just comment below to create a dedicated video on this macro jump to our third macro and that is quantity from b if you want your quantity custom property created into your part and that reflects in your drawing also this macro is for you so first we are going to add bill of material into our assembly and check how much quantity of individual part it contains we will see how manually people add quantity in the property manager and how lengthy the process is just open the part in the property tab you have to select the quantity you have to mention how much quantity in the assembly it has in the configuration property we will create the new one with the macro so for now we just delete this or we can just don't save the part so it won't reflect that i have already created a macro button you know how to create this but once you click on it uh, the quantity custom property is created in the configuration property here you can see let us see in the drawing file that this quantity property is reflected or not let me do it quickly once you drop the view you can see the quantity property is linked with the configuration property so this macro will create errorless job and uh, the quantity won't mismatch in your bum and in the drawing part well guys this macros are created by course tech and i would like to thank them for providing this bunch of macros for free for all solidworks users i would recommend to go there and check each and every macro and see which macro is preferable for your daily task or for the task which it consumes a lot of time i am definitely ensure you that this will save your time provide you an errorless job it will automate your process so go there and just look at the macros they have it will definitely help you out in your daily cat problems move to our fourth macro and that is change sheet format this one is for the drawing module so basically you have older title blocks and you want to change the new one so this macro is for you so let us create some drawing with uh, predefined sheet format of solidworks 
and let us add some seeds into it. So I have already created this macro button. Once you click on it, it will change all seats with your new seat format within a single click. I will show you uh, how you can provide the sheet format here. Go to edit macro. Select the file. In the visual basics, go to the top of the code line and here you will find out the sheet format file and uh, you have to write the exact file name as of your sheet format file and uh, this file must be saved as same location where your other software files are installed like here is the default uh, file location and here is the sheet format so you just have to mention the exact name here and for the sheet size you have to refer this image file like i have write 8 for the a3 sheet so for the a2 sheet you have to write 9 or a1 you have to write 10 so i will also provide this image into the description just go there and check it out this macro will save you a lot of time because in the single click it changes all the sheet uh, files contains in your drawing file okay guys we have our last macro but not the least one link sheet metal properties i have this sub assembly which contains sheet metal parts in it i have also inserted this bill of material with the properties column name as length width and thickness so you can see how i have inserted the flatten size so let us know how you can do the same when you create a sheet metal file it generates a cut list and you will find default properties here so basically this bonding box length width and thickness are the flattened size of your sheet metal which will be crucial for uh, cutting right so this macro will link this three property with custom property name as length width and thickness so by default it doesn't contains any properties here you can see so once I run this macro here you can now find length width and thickness here which are linked to the bonding box length width and thickness let me just close this part and we will see the flatten size is inserted in our bill of material you can see if you change the feature size the flatten size will be also updated in the bill of material this bill of material is crucial if you are providing it to the production team or even for the planning team to do procurement of material also this macro has one drawback that this will only run in part module if you run this macro in the assembly it will show you this error that active document is not a part so this is for the video guys if you really get values out of it hit the subscribe button i will try to make more of like this to automize your solidworks task please press the like button see you in the next video till then don't forget keep designing